Greetings fellow travelpreneurs and welcome to another episode of the Travelpreneur Club where I interview inspiring travelpreneurs from around the world and tell you their story of starting, launching, and growing their own location independent business. Now let's get started. Today I'm excited to have Kyle Musser with us. Kyle's an entrepreneur that currently lives in East Lansing, Michigan, home of the Michigan State Spartans. His firm, Digital Conversion Labs, is a borderless digital agency that's focused on helping entrepreneurs, startups, growing, band, growing brands, and of course, travelpreneurs turn conversations into conversions. He's here today to share a bit of his entrepreneurial journey and drop some insights as how to unlock and empower the travelpreneur inside of you and the listener. So Kyle, welcome to the Travelpreneur Club, my friend. Hey, what's up, buddy? It's good to hear from you, man. And I am happy to be here sharing wisdom with your audience. Plus, I'm happy to get a chance to reconnect with you and see you back on the grind in that travelpreneur journey, man. It's exciting. Most definitely. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Uh, so Kyle and I go back a little ways. Uh, we work together in, uh, in East Lansing. So uh, it's good to, to finally catch up with you again here. So uh, Yeah, man. So Kyle, I'm sure you have an idea of what a travelpreneur is. Um, well, I would like to give you our definition. So a travelpreneur is a traveling entrepreneur that believes in building location independent businesses that allow them, but that allow, I'm sorry, that allow them complete control and freedom over their lifestyle. So Kyle, what makes you a part of the Travelpreneur Club? Man, to me, it's a, it's a mindset, man. We live in amazing times and you know, here um, we can talk about my entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey a little bit and dive more into that. Uh, but to me, a travelpreneur is somebody who's, uh, again, I think it's all of us. I think we all have the ability to create a lifestyle, a independently uh, location independent business in today's day and age uh, with mediums, you know, Skype, Slack, all these different tools and resources we have at our fingertips. We live in some of the most amazing times. And I think that if you're um, you know, hearing this podcast, you are one of those people who has the ability to create a business or to create some avenue, some vehicle that allows you to travel and be location independent. Um, that doesn't mean, for example, me, like I live here in East Lansing, Michigan. I have an apartment. I have a roof over my head. Um, I'm currently not living the travelpreneur lifestyle. However, my business is completely 100% location independent. I could pick up and leave and travel and do whatever. Um, so I do believe uh, no matter w most businesses today, you have that ability to at least at some season of your journey, be a travelpreneur, which is the most amazing thing because traveling does so many things. It opens new perspectives. It gives you a different paradigm uh, and just allows you to just see the wonders of the world firsthand with your eyes and your senses and your ears. Uh, it's amazing. Absolutely. Um, so you're currently in East Lansing, Michigan. Um, can I tell the audience a little bit why you chose that particular location to, to run your business from? <laughs> you know, it's, it's it really, you know, everything's a choice. Uh, so for me, it kind of will we'll dive back into this. So me and Drew, uh, we have a similar connection. I went to Michigan State, uh, was a dual major in business and then econ HR. So a couple different avenues there. Um, went and did big corporate consulting, lived on the East Coast, just outside of New York City for a couple months, uh, was doing consulting out there. Um, started traveling quite a bit for my job and decided that I was paying too much in rent and just wasting my money. So moved actually back to East Lansing for that reason and for personal reasons. Moved back here, was working from here, was traveling out to client sites. Um, and long story short, ended up getting fired from my first corporate big time consulting job, which is another interesting mm -hmm. story. But um, over the course of finding the next steps and just pursuing along the journey to figure out what that next opportunity might be to build something, to really you know create something, um, I actually started a company called Fitness Rich. We were a lifestyle uh, fitness transformation company, mostly focused on online uh, digital growth. Uh, we had a big Instagram following. I had three partners. Uh, we had actually chose because my partners at the time and I was here in East Lansing to stay in East Lansing and build this company because we had access to marketing dollars and resources and stuff so we could build the base here and then each of us could start to travel and do our own thing. Well, that partnership uh, did not work out. And I actually have a lease here in East Lansing. So I decided to stick that lease out, use my resources here. And I started Digital Conversion Labs as an agency. So currently run that. Um, but East Lansing to me was just kind of the home base that I was at. So I decided to use what I had at my disposal at the time being to make it work and make it happen. Absolutely. So there's one thing I kind of want to go back and dive back into. Um, so, you know, like, like you already know, many of our audience are aspiring travelpreneurs. 
you know, they're currently currently going to school, they're currently working a nine to five job. So, you know, most people after they graduate college, they get a com comfortable nine to five job. You know, they make the morning commute every day and they end it. What, and what made you take the leap into working for yourself, you know, and leaving that, that corporate lifestyle, whether it be by your choice or by their choice, what, well, you know, what made you leave that environment? You know, it's really interesting because, um, you know, going back uh, to my journey at 19 years old, I actually, or actually, before, let's go, let's even go back a little bit further than that. So going into my spring semester uh, in high school, I got accepted into Michigan State. I uh, was a pretty good student, top 10 in my class of only, I think, 90, 90, 92 people. It wasn't that big of a high school class, but it was still doing pretty good, I thought. I uh, got into Michigan State, and I remember having a conversation with my dad, um, who was worked at General Motors his whole life, worked on the line, a factory job, uh, but having a conversation about you know, what the next steps were and how to choose like a career path in college, because nobody had ever, at the time, like nobody understood or like in my, at least in my network of people understood how to make that decision properly. So I remember specifically sitting outside doing some gardening with my dad and we were talking about the next steps in college and I had to choose a major and I had to like the next week to choose it or at least declare that initial major at Michigan state. So we're sitting there and I asked my dad, you know, what should I do? And he's like, well, do something that you love. And what's interesting is that's always kind of stuck with me. So taking that into college and taking that you know, into the future, into getting that corporate job, you know, even, even early back in my entrepreneurial days of getting involved in network marketing with Amway, it was really, it was kind of an eye opening experience and a, a complete paradigm shift for myself from going from a fixed mindset of here's one path that you take and work for 37, 38 years like my dad, or you are going to take steps and you're going to take, you know, you're, it's a journey. You're going to be continuously on this path for the rest of your life. So it's really interesting to see like, over the course of looking back into the into that and having perspective over this, that it's it's an accumulation of things, and it was just like learning from different mentors, being involved in networking groups, you know, trying to get into Michigan State's business school and actually getting into it, um, taking part of a venture capital private equity class and learning about startups and entrepreneurship, going to work in New York City uh, and studying investment banking and working for. Uh, or going through a program out there at NYU for the summer, you know, it's just an accumulation of things always kept like that little voice in the back of your head keeps telling you like, this is the path. This is what you should be doing. And this is who you've been called to be. Mm -hmm. But it's a matter of, you know, having the awareness and having the mindset to step up to the plate and really make it happen. And that's been, that's been a journey, man. You know, I'm just turned 30. So 10 years in the making, and I'm actually going six months into a new, completely new venture. that's going to be a longer term uh, thing for the next, you know, five, 10 plus years and see where it goes. So it's, it's not going to be, yeah, I think for most people, a, just a one off experience that makes them or calls them to, you know, the travel partner lifestyle or starting a business or, um, you know, whatever it may be, it's going to be an accumulation of things over the course of your lifetime that become that body, become that art of work that really make you aware that this is, this is the path that you're called, called to do. So just do it, <laughs> just do the damn work. So, it's really interesting. For sure. Um, so I do want to get more into your current business. But first, um, what, do you, what do you believe is the greatest factor holding people back from you know, taking control of their lives and making necessary changes to be happy? Whether it be working for themselves or getting a job they enjoy, what do you think is the greatest factor holding people back from that? Man, I think it's I think it's uh, it's fear. I think it's false evidence appearing real. I'm sure you mm -hmm. you've heard that saying, and any of you in the audience listening to this podcast have probably heard that. But I, I truly think it is. I think we all have this tendency to go into fight or flight mode, or listen to, um, you know, listen to that little voice uh, deep inside of us. That's that's always you know our natural tendency as human beings. The way we're like naturally wired is to. You know, you know, try to protect ourselves, try to protect our, our own survival and anything outside of what we believe internally, like deep inside of us, anything that we believe is is going to pros possibly harm that is will, will cause a red flag and your mind and your body will retract and you'll pull back in. So I just I th personally think it's it's mindset. And I think there's a lot of things that you could do and we can discuss these things that somebody could do to get over that fear. But I think at the end of the day, it comes back to the person that's literally standing, you know, if you're looking in a mirror, right in front of you. Sure. And for you personally, what is, what is one thing that you do on a daily basis to conquer that fear, you know, of whether it be failure or whatever that may be, what do you do on a daily basis to conquer that? 
Man, um, I, I'd say the biggest, the biggest shift and biggest change um, in just a daily exercise is gratitude. Mm-hmm. It's writing down one, two, five, whatever you know things that you're grateful for. Write down a hundred; it doesn't matter. But at least write down if you have, if you're listening to this. You probably have either a smartphone or you're watching this online. That's something to be grateful for because information like this, I am not the end all be all expert of everything by any means, but you guys are hearing information from me that I've learned from other mentors and resources and books and podcasts and people like Drew. Um, You know, it's an accumulation of knowledge. So I think that uh, just having that attitude of gratitude every single day is one of the biggest shifts somebody can have initially, initially. Just even to be grateful, I mean, again, I was making good money in my corporate job, you know, had a nice 401k going, had money in the bank, things were good. Um, but at the time, I, I didn't understand the true meaning of gratitude. And a lot, there were a lot of days where I woke up um, just, you know, just lethargic and feeling depressed. And it was, it was silly because I literally had a beautiful roof over my home. Mm-hmm. I had money in the bank. I had a good career going. I mean, things were good. And things are even better now to this day. Um, but you you have to be grateful for what you have in this current moment, no matter what it is, even if it's the smallest things, because I guarantee you there's somebody else out there that has not necessarily less things than you, but they do have less than you. They don't have drinking water. They don't have access to audio. They don't have access to information like this. So you just have to be grateful. Absolutely. And I think travel can be a huge um, help in helping you realize you know, that you, we, we have it good. I mean, honestly, we come from, if you're living, if you're hearing this in the U.S., we, we, we live a good life and there's we really have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely true. I mean, I, I give you props because I personally, I've traveled to a few little places outside of the country, but they're more tourist destinations. But I give you props because you're actually experiencing the full, you know, the full onset of culture and the cultural differences. So you get to see it first and you've traveled South America. I know you've done this. So you get to see firsthand, like how, especially people that are listening to this in the States or in a country that has access to most of the things we take for granted. Um, you, you really do get a perspective and understanding of how, how wealthy we are. I mean, even the person who makes what's it like a, a dollar a day is like people, most people in the world live, live on less than a dollar per day. I mean, like some of us are getting, upset because we don't have a seven figure business and XXX and it's, it's, it's all fluff. You know, you, you have to have perspective. Exactly. Um, so I do want to get into your, to your business now. So, um, I know I, 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 I can explain it a little bit, but I really want to hear it coming from you. Um, and to, to explain to the audience exactly what you are doing to, to, to grow your location independent business, you know, tell us a little bit more about digital conversion labs and how it could benefit, um, traveling entrepreneurs. So, man, so guys, we are a um, creative agency. We're currently working uh, a lot with agency clients um, to help them grow their businesses, to help them grow their brands. Um, Anywhere from newer startups, I'm actually launching a brand new uh, brand with a partner, a couple partners here this this month, uh, helping them get off the ground. So it's 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 an accumulation of experiences. And again, perspective, um, having failed and I say failed, it's just a series of experiences that help you help you grow as a person, help you grow as a leader. But the whole idea here at Digital Conversion Labs is whether you're a travelpreneur or you're a growing startup that's raised you know, seven figures in funding and has a run rate at X, Y, Z per year. And the reality is, is the principles to grow a business, to grow a brand in today's age are pretty much the same. You know, we have all these different tools, all these different resources to help, again, create conversations just like this podcast, just like Snapchat, just like all these other mediums that we can use to grow one thing. And that's an audience to grow a community of people that respect and view you or your brand as the authority. Okay. Perfect example is Drew. Drew is growing the travelpreneur brand. Okay. It's not just like a lifestyle business, which I've, I've been in that camp with a couple, you know, partners at fitness rich. It wasn't just a lifestyle business. It was a brand. We were building a brand that people recognized in the marketplace. And I truly believe that if you want to stand apart in today's age, you have to not only build a business, and that's fine to do projects. It's fine. It's fine to go out and say I'm going to travel for six months and document it on Medium or whatever it may be. But if you are truly wanting to build uh, something that creates value and solves a problem in the marketplace, you need to build a business that becomes a like the brand. Perfect example: um, Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone. If you guys don't know him, Grant. When you think of sales training, he literally his mission 
And this is in his 10X book. He talks about this. And this book was written four or five years ago. And you can see it coming to fruition now. This guy is on Snapchat. He's on Periscope. He has a TV show. He has like all these different things going. He wants to own the conversation. Okay. Another example. This might cause and ruffle some feathers. Mm-hmm. But Donald Trump right now. If you guys are listening to this, I don't care what your views are, and I'm not going to go into my views as far as like the political stance. That's besides the point. But he understands the power of conversation and the power of story as far as it connects with the audience that he's trying to serve and hit the pain point and connect with those people. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. So for Drew right here, he is trying to, again, help people live the travel lifestyle and pay for that travel lifestyle, right? Actually support themselves living, like making a full-time income doing this. Okay. I will shout somebody out right here. Um, Natalie Sisson, the suitcase entrepreneur. She has built a massive community of people that love her and she is able to travel the world doing what she loves, helping other people do the same thing. And I can think of a few other examples too. We're not going to, we don't need to go into those, but the reality is if you want to build something you need to have it be something that's worth having a conversation about. So that's where the idea of, you know, conversations to conversions comes from, comes from, because when it comes to business, most people focus just on, you know, and again, I've been part of network marketing and, you know, been in sales, you know, everything else. Most people focus just on that one off sale, but there's a lot that goes into the whole, especially with social media. I mean, you could have somebody come into your, you know, sales funnel, come into your email list, come into your community in, you know, six, eight, ten months later, they finally buy from you because they needed to see your stuff. They needed to see who you were. They needed to get the co- get the confidence to actually buy your product because that product is going to maybe, let's say it's in the health and fitness space. And actually, I've just seen this with a client. Um, you know, maybe they needed the the mindset and the belief in themselves that they could take that product that they were serving them with and use that and actually transform their life. I mean, so the reality is, is with the tools that we have, I think we live in some of the most amazing times. Other people in my space validate the same fact. Um, if you want to reach people in the audience around something in a true and genuine and authentic way, I believe now is the best time to do it. It's it's either now or it's you know tomorrow, and it's going to get more crowded tomorrow exactly. with more people coming online, and that means more opportunity. But you have to start today, okay? And we can dive more into some actual like actionable steps that we can take um, if you want. Sure. Um, so actually kind of feeding off of that is, you know, you've built some businesses already, you know, some, like you already said, some have failed. Um, but even though through those failures, you've learned a lot and you take, you take those, those experiences and those learning experiences to your current business. So when building a business from scratch, what is the most important thing that you overlooked in one of your past experiences? So looking back, um, and that's actually that's actually a really good question because looking back, I think it was not having the the full or not stopping and having the full awareness of understanding what I wanted. Because especially when you bring up partners, when you bring up partners, mm-hmm. I mean that's like that's a dating relationship. And I think that's where a lot of like personal relationships, marriages and stuff go bad, is because you're not you're not mat you're not matching and meshing your your personal values, your mission, your vision, things like that. So I think when you when you're first starting out, and I was actually I took some took some quick notes that we can talk about, but I think there's a really good exercise I think people can do. It's called past, present, and future. Okay. So if you think about it in looking at your life or looking back on my life, but like from the audience audience's perspective, if you were to look back on your life, it doesn't matter what age you are, 18 to 97. Okay. But if you were to look back at some of the themes in your life. There's a really good exercise that you can do is looking back and saying, okay, some of the major themes, some of the major turning points in my life, like a business failure or relationship failure, things like that. What are those themes? What mo- what type of movie? Are they a, com- a comedic like event? Are they a drama? Things like that. And you can start to see patterns of stuff happening. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you're seeing it, patterns of, for example, I can speak to experience of self-sabotage and not following through. That goes back to some of the things that happened back in my childhood. And until you get that stuff right, you know, speaking from experience, you know, there were certain opportunities with certain people that I, that I, you know, ruined because I didn't have that past wrapped up. I didn't have that, I didn't have that foundation built to be able to look at the, look at the past, 
take a take a inventory of my current reality and then look project into the future of what I wanted to create and the life I wanted to create. So I mean, I think that's the biggest step that you can take is looking back, uh, and then you know after you take some time to look back, then take the time to look at your current reality and say, you know, just ask the question: Is this what I want? And if you're looking around, you're looking at your job, you're looking at your, look, Drew, perfect example. Well, let's talk about this for 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 a minute because sure. you were in your job working in Miami, okay? And you're there and you look around and let's talk about that. What was that day for you where you looked around and you were like, holy shit, this is not what I want? Absolutely. I mean, I think it, I think it kind of occurred over a period of time, but you know, day in and day out, I realized that I wasn't doing something I was I was enjoying. I was, you know, I was I was working I was working for things instead of experiences. You know, I was I was I wanted a nice car. I mean, I wanted a consistent paycheck. I wanted a you know, a to be able to pay my rent every month. You know, that, that that's what kept me in that job, you know, is is knowing that I have these commitments and these obligations to to fulfill. And you know, and it you know, it scared me. It's scary. It's it's scary to to think about not ha- being able to meet those commitments. Um but yeah, I mean, over time it's just you realize that it's not something that you that I was passionate about, not something I wanted to do. Yeah, but well, that goes back to you know looking at your past. I mean, you 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 took what was it, six months and traveled South America or mm-hmm. three months, seven months, seven months. So looking back at your past, that was one of the big like eye opening paradigm shifting perspectives that changed your life, Absolutely. especially travel entrepreneurs listening to this. That was something that he did. He set himself set him up set himself up for future success by putting himself and immersing himself in something in an experience that would shape and mold his future. So Drew knew when he was working in that job, waking up every day, that was something one of his values and his you know, one, some of his beliefs that weren't being matched with his current reality. Okay? Then he knew he had to make a decision. And once you know you have to make that decision, you then have to ask yourself, okay, what do I want? And then from there, you can go into, and we have actually a whole roadmap and framework uh, that we're going to be sharing with clients and we have been sharing with clients and actually taking clients through, uh, but specifically helping our membership community, help them go through and helping our email list and a- anybody who comes and associates with us, help them go through that. But I think getting that foundation built and truly understanding first um, your life and what you want is, is one of the things that people overlook because most people um, go into you know, starting a business or you know, looking for that next opportunity. But that next opportunity is a lot of times not aligned with what your purpose is. And if that's not aligned, it's going to cause a lot of issues and it's going to cause you, you could build a billion dollar company, but you could be completely unhappy and you could be a selfish jerk. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that's, it doesn't change who you are as a person. And I I know, I know you've read this book. Um, I think kind of where I've heard that kind of same kind of mindset was, um, will it fly by Pat Flynn? Um, you know, really build it. But yeah, I'm sure you probably have it next to you, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Drew knows I read a lot. Yeah. So yeah. Kyle, Kyle's a very avid reader. Um, so whenever you need a book recommendation, uh, give Kyle a yep. shout out. I'm sure you'll have something for you. I, Pat's, uh, I, I, Pat's, you know, phone number in my phone. I mean, he's, yeah, I consider him, consider him a, a mentor and a, you know, a friend when I see him out in San Diego, uh, great guy. So, but yeah, I think that's one of the first things you can do is looking just you just take an inventory of your life. Um, and I got some recommendations that you guys can hop on for some books that we can talk about. But sure. Well, actually, we'll, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get into that at the end of, at the, end of the interview. Uh, we'll last for a few recommendations. Um, but what what is one of the greatest factors that has attributed to your personal success thus far? If you could choose one thing, hard work, man. It's, it's a you know looking. Yeah, the hustle. I mean, literally, it's a hustle from. Networking through internships, I applied to, to business school at Michigan State because my, gr- my grades were uh, complete garbage transferring from a small community college. Um, but to get into business school, I had to apply three times and get in. Um, you know, it's just tenacity. You know, I had to apply to different internships. I, ke- I kept an inventory of, and I wish I still had it. It was on, excuse me, it was on my old MacBook. But I kept an inventory of how many internships I applied for going into my graduation year and graduating college. And it's interesting because I remember this specific thing stuck out and I've shared this with a few people and they're like, holy cow, like you did that. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not the only one that does this. Like other there's, you're competing against like the world. Like there was other people doing the same exact things that you're doing. But I saw an article, I was applying for investment banking jobs. I saw an article in fortune about, uh, one of the firms who in nine 11 lost pretty much their whole firm 
in in you know the twin towers going down. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the people on the executive team was not in the office that day. He ends up taking over the company. The company's called Cantor Fitzgerald, and you can look this up. He ends up taking over the company after the twin towers, you know, crash and Wall Street's like we're in a recession, all this crazy stuff. And I see this article in there. I really connect with it. And I went to Cantor Fitzgerald's website. I found he was the CEO of the company. I found his email on the website because that's the beautiful thing about technology too and connecting with influencers and connecting with people. It doesn't matter if they're big shots or just it, they're people, okay? Mm-hmm. I went to the website, emailed him, and he personally shot me an email back, connected me with one of his vice presidents. We hopped on the phone for 10 minutes and come to find out they only hire from a few specific schools, but they were super impressed and said, keep in touch, Okay. But that type of mindset and that type of mentality is what you need to have as an entrepreneur. You have to be able to get up every freaking day and make it happen. Whether you're a travelpreneur sitting on a beach or whatever, you need to still get up and produce. Like if you want to make a living um, and make an impact in the world. So hard work by hands down. You know, my grandpa, my dad, both retired, but still get up every day and work on engines and go out in the, the field. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it's just something that's been ingrained in me and something that um, I actually sometimes have to take a step back and not work as hard because you, you need that balance too. Definitely. Um, so, you know, it hasn't been all success for you thus far. You know, you've had, you've had like we talked about before, you have, you have your failures. That's just part of the entrepreneurial journey. Um, so take us, to, take us to a moment, you know, when you, when you re- really were down and out, like when you really had a lot of self doubt, um, when you thought you couldn't go along anymore as an entrepreneur, you know, you wanted to give up, you want to throw in the towel, um, take us to that moment and share with us how you overcame the adversity to arrive to the point where you are today. Man. Um, so I think that, I think the biggest experience I can take is last year, um, with my partnership, I had three partners in this company. Uh, we were growing, you know, a brand that was getting recognized amongst our peers. We had a live event. We had a very well-known podcaster come out um, and do an in-person um, mastermind for our group. We had forty some people at the event, and we were coming. We were riding literally. So, we were all so like high, like up and up in the clouds. Like this is. We had a clothing line coming out. We had so many things cooking and working. We were, we had ninety day transformation challenges happening. We were coaching people. It was amazing. Like people saying, "You have changed my life." Nothing like it. Okay, and coming off that, you know, the partnership, you know, for for reasons that we could spend hours on, um, did not work out. And coming off that last fall, you know, at the time we were also working part time jobs or going to school or just doing whatever we were doing and putting everything back in the company to help grow it and to build that base. So the foundation was there so that we could take that and build a very profitable, uh, widely recognizable brand. So we all had to do our thing to make a living. And I was working part-time. That's how me and Drew met at this beer bar in East Lansing, um, working there. And after we decided to close the doors and shut up shop, uh, it was kind of, you know, we had put ourselves out on social media. It was, you know, very often we were doing things, live events, webinars, all these different things. And once that happens, people start to ask questions and saying, you know, people you haven't seen in a while saying, oh, what happened to that? And you have to, you have to go, you kind of, you kind of retract and get in that fear state. And it's like, you know, the failure, the failure could either break you or it can mold you into what you are today. And I, I truly believe that everything happens for a a specific reason, Mm -hmm. but you have to have the awareness to look inside and self-reflect and say, okay, what could I have done better? Not what could my partners have done better, but what could I have done better? Personally, going back and looking at just that specific incident, I mean, having three partners in a four-person partnership, I would never have done that. So, I mean, that's that's a great example of perspective that I can take going forward to build on future endeavors. Definitely. Same um, for you guys, too, in the audience. Man. Sure. I'll tell you what. Um, so, you're currently working on your digital conversion labs. So, what is your number one goal for this year in that business? And how do you plan to accomplish it? So this year in 2016, um, we have we have them. So I guess I'll give you the bigger picture vision. So in the next five years, we want to create $100 million in brand equity for our clients and for our community. And if you break down the numbers, I mean, the numbers, it's really, it's not that difficult to get and hit that number in today's day and age. But the reality is, is this year, we have a goal of hitting a million dollars in one, a million dollars in one, one cent at least in brand value equity for clients. Uh, and we're actually, we're tracking pretty good. On that, we've done we've done a six figure launch 
uh, for a client at the first of the year. We've done some smaller launches since then. Uh, we have our own website coming out here in a few weeks and we'll be launching our stuff this summer. We have a new brand coming out with a client. So, I mean, things are cooking and I'm looking to grow this. I'm moving, looking at office space, um, specifically a co-working space so that I can travel and do the things that I want to do as well. Um, but that's our biggest mission this year, man, is building a community, building that initial base. It's not about the money necessarily. Money is a reflection of value. So we know if we give a tremendous amount of value to our clients and to our community, people like you doing podcast interviews, writing stuff like that, that to me is the biggest impactor. It's not about money this year. It's about building the foundation of people who just can, can relate to what we're building. Um, and I think that's, that's a big lesson for people in the travelpreneur community too, is when you're going out to build an audience, when you're traveling and sharing information, put your audience first because your audience is what matters. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, when you start offering something to them to help them solve their problem, they are the ones that are going to be paying your bills and paying for your travel, um, that reciprocation of value. So you need to make sure that you put your audience number one. Most definitely. So we, we touched on this briefly um, earlier. Books. You know, you're an avid reader. You're, I mean, you're probably devouring at least a book a week, um, more or less. Um, so, you know, the Travelpreneur Club is made up of both established and aspiring travelpreneurs. So what is one of your favorite books as of recently that you believe would really resonate with the audience? Man, um, so I mean, I'm sure maybe you've heard this already. <laughs> yeah, sure, maybe you've heard this already, but um, maybe you haven't. Ask Gary V book. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, I and I would actually pick up because you're a travelpreneur. I would pick this one up on audiobook because Gary, um, it's the best audiobook hands down. And I have like 75 in my phone. Mm -hmm. It's the best one that you can download just because he gets on there. It's real. It's raw. It's Gary V. His personality. It's him. He's, you know, if you're, if you don't like swear words, don't get it. But if you, if you enjoy the raw realness of if, if Gary V and who he is, or if you guys don't know him, I'm sure Drew will link it up in the show notes. Most definitely. Uh, so that's a good one. Uh, the other, a couple of the other ones, um, I have a few here, but I think for people specifically, if you're starting off in your journey or you're trying to discover what your thing is, The Art of Work by Jeff Goins. Okay. Uh, great guy. But I think that one of the biggest things we're missing in today's day and age is the art of apprenticeship. And when it comes to wanting to launch the next unicorn and be a billionaire and create this travel printer lifestyle, et cetera, people are, um, they're understating the value of entrepreneur, or excuse me, apprenticeship and the journeyman path mm -hmm. of like studying under somebody, like studying under somebody like Drew or studying under somebody like one of your favorite people that you look up to. The reality is, is you can learn and you can, you can break your learning curve down and you could grow so much faster if you just took your ego aside and listened to the information that people are putting out there, books like this, but not only listen and read these books, like take a run through it, take your notes and create a game plan coming out of it to use it because these authors like Jeff and everybody else, Gary, they don't write these books or share this stuff to have it sit and have you do nothing. They write it so that you can get out there and put this information to use and change your life. Absolutely. Take, it's all about taking action. I mean, ideas are a dime a dozen. It's all about execution and taking action on those ideas. Yeah. Everybody's got ideas, man. They're, you know, if, 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 if we got paid just for our ideas, we'd all be infinitely wealthy, but that's exactly. not the reality. Most definitely. Um, so yeah. So thank you so much for, for joining me today, Kyle. Um, I truly, truly do appreciate your time and, uh, and I enjoyed our chat and catching up here. I'm excited to see what you do with the Digital Conversion Labs coming up in this year. Um, so to my fellow travelpreneurs, I highly recommend heading over to digitalconversionlabs.com, signing up for the labs that Kyle's put together that can help you turn those um, audience conversations into paid conversions. Um, so Kyle, before we let you go, please share with us one parting piece of wisdom and how we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Yeah, man. So I appreciate the I appreciate the time. I recognize you, Drew, as a friend. Um, I'm happy that you're out there pursuing your life's calling of helping, coaching other people, and also you know viewing the world, changing your perspective. Um, it's really it's it's inspiring, man. So I, I appreciate the time and appreciate you. you having me on. Uh, so parting piece of wisdom, you know. So I would say if you know if anybody has done it, so can you. I mean, that's the reality. Is literally anything that we can conceive in our minds, we can achieve. And it's been proven time and time again over the course of over the course of time, over the course of history. So I would leave you guys with that. 
Uh, if you guys want to connect with me, Digital Conversion Labs is the best way to really stay in touch with what we're up to. But also, too, if you guys if you guys are on Snapchat listening to this, add me at Kyle Musser one I'm sure he'll link it up. Mm -hmm. I'm actually promoting that pretty heavily just for, I think it's a great way to connect with just people one-on-one -on -one across, across the world. Uh, you can take my, take my snap code or take my Snapchat name and add that pretty quick. Send me a snap. Let me know what you think. Send me your questions. Other than that, yeah, digitalconversionlabs.com and feel free to uh, shoot me a note uh, with any questions you might have. For sure. All right. Well, thanks again, buddy. And uh, take care. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. It would mean the world to me if you would subscribe below and share this video with a friend that you think it would help. If you'd like this interview in audio format, you can click above right there to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. And don't forget to head on over to thetravelpreneurclub.com for more inspirational content that'll help you begin your journey as a travelpreneur. Until next time, take care, my friends.